Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday. It is the only Sunday in the church calendar that does not focus on the life of Jesus, but instead focuses upon the central uh, uh, doctrine of the Christian church. And that, of course, is the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. Today also is Confirmation Sunday. And we had a confirmation at the 8.30 service, Emma Druckenbrode, and now at this service today, Andrew Grimm and Diana Jorgensen uh, will be confirmed. So it is always an important day in the life of the church. I want to welcome those of you who are joining us online this morning. And I would invite you to rise as we begin our service this morning with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbor. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus often comes in mysterious, surprising, and beautiful ways. Friends, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. For Christmas, Dale gave me tickets to attend the Moth storytelling event at the McCarter Theater. I had never heard of the Moth, but now I am a big fan. I don't know why it's called the Moth, but it is an organization that helps ordinary people tell their stories. In addition to the events like at the McCarter, the Moth also has the Moth Radio Hour and a podcast where the best stories are told. Listening to the Moth is a great way to pass time on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And that's what we were doing this past Monday, driving home from Ohio. We heard many stories, but one stood out from all the rest. It was told by Dr. Sam Blackman. He told this story from his days of being a resident in pediatric oncology at a Seattle hospital. Dr. Blackman began by saying that there is little beauty in medicine. The birth of a child, unless it's your own child, is not beautiful, he says. The operating room is more about brutality than beauty. Disease is not beautiful, and parents of sick kids are not beautiful. They are terrified. And they don't want a second-year pediatric resident in charge of their child's care. Dr. Blackman admits that back in those days, he was more ugly than beautiful. Fatigue dominated my days. I was afraid of not knowing enough, of screwing up. Too often, my words hurt parents rather than helped parents. I was not being the doctor I wanted to be. But that all changed with Brianna. Brianna was born with an inoperable brain tumor. Children die within eight months, 100% of the time, he said, with this tumor. And understandably, Brianna's mother was filled with rage. She was a single mother facing this all alone. And Dr. Blackman said that she would wall herself off in the hospital. She kept the door to her room closed, the curtain drawn, the drapes closed. She would not even let the doctors come in to examine Brianna because what's the point? She would not accept any treatment plans, except kind of strange treatments that she heard out there, one of which was coffee enemas. And Dr. Blackman said, it's a real thing. 
although the attending physician had never heard of it, and so he assigned Dr. Blackman to research coffee enemas and bring back his findings to the team. Dr. Blackman did the research, and because of this, he was able to establish a relationship with Brianna's mother. The only doctor she would let into the room, he exclusively became Brianna's doctor. But residents eventually rotate off cases, and Brianna was eventually discharged, and he thought he would never see Brianna or her mother again. But a month later, his pager went off late on a Saturday night, and it was the nurse from the palliative care unit of the hospital asking Dr. Blackman to come in because Brianna was now dying, and her mother was asking for him. He was not on call that night, and he was not assigned to this unit, but he came anyways. And he knew that he was in for a long night because he said, you know, children take a long time to die because usually their hearts are still strong, their lungs are still strong. He spent most of the night giving Brianna medicine to help her breathe and to relieve her pain. When I could do nothing more, I just stood at the door and bore witness the Ministry of Presence. When Brianna died, the attending physician told Dr. Blackman to now pronounce her dead, and he hesitated because he had never done that before. But he was the one who the mother knew and trusted. So he performed the ritual, checked for a pulse, listened for any sign of life, and then he told Brianna's mother that indeed Brianna had died. Before he left the room, he asked if there was anything else he could do. And Brianna's mother asked if he could pray with her. Dr. Blackman said, I hesitated. I'm a Latin Jew from New Jersey. I really don't pray. I really don't believe in God. To pretend to pray was the very wrong thing to do. But then it dawned on me that this moment was not about me. I needed to be the doctor that Brianna's mother saw me to be, and I needed to be the doctor that I wanted to be. And so I stayed. I held Brianna's mother's hands as she began a prayer I had only heard about. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Dr. Blackman concluded, So there I was, experiencing the one beautiful moment in medicine. People know the Lord's Prayer. In hospital rooms, on deathbeds, even amongst those who do not go to church, people always seem to know the Lord's Prayer. For people with Alzheimer's or dementia, I can be in a visit where they are totally out of it until we come to the Lord's Prayer. And they know it. And they pray it. At weddings and funerals, I just had the experience yesterday. We were at my niece's wedding. Dale was uh, officiating, and uh, our niece uh, married a New Brunswick firefighter. So there were a lot of firemen from New Brunswick at the wedding, and I knew we were going to be in a little trouble when we pulled into the parking lot beforehand, and they were all drinking out in the parking lot. And I go, oh, oh, here we go. And we got to the wedding, and yeah, you know, how, you, you've been to weddings where maybe they're not really into what the pastor was saying. But then it came time for the Lord's Prayer, and these firemen sitting right in front, in front of me, on cue. Our Father, 
who aren't in heaven. They knew the prayer, and they prayed the prayer like we do here on Sunday morning. Isn't it amazing that this prayer changed Dr. Blackman's life, this Jewish doctor? He didn't convert, but he called this experience with Brianna's mother a tipping point. Though heart-wrenching sad, again, it was the one beautiful moment he had in medicine. Dr. Blackman admits that to him, since this point, medicine is less about science and more about understanding life and what makes it precious and special. And now, after 20 years, he was able to tell the story. And he had Dale and I in tears as we were driving home on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. The Lord's Prayer is included in Luther's small catechism, our little text for confirmation. In previous years, we would only talk about the Lord's Prayer we would talk about Luther's meaning to the Lord's Prayer as we talked about the Apostles' Creed and the Ten Commandments and other contents of the small catechism. But this year looked different. Instead of meeting on Wednesday afternoons and having me talk to the class, this year we partnered with St. Bart's and with Abiding Presence. We met on a Saturday, once a month, at St. Bart's, at their, or on their food pantry Saturdays. And so we would spend the morning serving in the food pantry and the clothes closet, and then in the afternoon we'd go up into the sanctuary and we would apply our experiences to the small catechism. I really enjoyed teaching with Pastor Eric and Pastor Miles, and the class said, you know, confirmation's a lot better this year than it was last year. They liked having a larger class, but mostly they liked interacting with the people who came to St. Mark's. Diana, I remember you at the door. Do you remember that? Diana was at the door, and that's a pretty responsible job because you're letting the people in, and you can't have too many people in, and Diana handled it marvelously. Andrew, uh, I don't think you missed a Saturday, Andrew, and I remember you packing groceries, distributing the groceries, hearing the gratitude from the people, almost all of them say thank you as they receive this gift. Emma, I remember her up in the clothes closet, uh, folding, keeping the closet neat and tidy as people continually came in. You cannot create this in the classroom. We didn't talk as much about the small catechism and the Lord's Prayer as we did in previous years, but we had the encounters with God's people. Maybe these encounters were not as intense as Dr. Blackman's work as a pediatric resident. But you know, the people at St. Bart's were great teachers of the Lord's Prayer, just like Brianna's mother. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread. The Lord's Prayer and this year's experience of confirmation just might be the tipping point for our confirmands. The promise from Jesus at the end of Matthew's Gospel is that I am with you always through the good and the bad. Diana and Andrew, and I so tell this to Emma as well at the first service. My prayer is that the Lord's Prayer and this experience of confirmation, 
I pray that it will well deep within you like it well deep within Brianna's mother, so that in times of need, you can draw upon it and feel God's presence when you most need it. So that even in a world that can be ugly at times, the presence of Jesus will be the beauty that will carry you through. they come and they stand by themselves here as they say yes to baptism to continue this life of faith and that is why we are here and this is what we are going to do at this time dear friends we give thanks for the gift of baptism for these people one with us in the body of Christ who are making public affirmation of their baptism I present Andrew Grimm Diana Jorgensen, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for this sister and brother whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. 
Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. <coughs> Diana and Andrew, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God, if so, answer, I renounce them. And to the congregation, we confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Diana and Andrew, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you now intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the examples of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? Diana, I'll ask you. If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And Andrew? I do? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And people of God, do you promise to support this sister and brother and pray for them in their life in Christ. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. At this time, I would like to invite our parents and any family members who would want to come forward, and we will have the laying on of hands for Diana and Andrew. And Diana and Andrew, I'm going to ask you to kneel here at the altar. Diana's grandfather is a pastor, a Lutheran pastor. Thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Diana Florence the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. And now we'll come to Andrew. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Andrew Joshua the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. 
Empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering. And bring him to everlasting life. Amen. And now, let us rejoice with the sisters, sister and brother in Christ. We rejoice with you in the light of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And at this time, it is appropriate to give and to let us continue with the prayers of the church. Holy, holy, holy God, in calling forth creation from the void, revealing yourself in human flesh, and pouring forth your wisdom to guide us, you manifest your concern for your whole universe. You invite us, as your people, to gather the world's needs into our hearts and bring them before you. God whose fingers sculpt sun and moon, spirit brooding over chaos before the naming of the day, Savior sending us to earth's end with water and words, startle us with the grace and love and communion of your unity and diversity that we may live to praise to the praise of your majestic name. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. On this Confirmation Sunday, we pray for your presence among Andrew and Diana and Emma. Be with all of our young people that the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and the Ten Commandments will be their tipping point and carry them from the ugliness of the world into the beauty of divine presence. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we pray for a new experience of grace and mercy in our lives, that God's love will free us from past failures, give us courage to make amends, and help us renew and rebuild our significant relationships. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always, to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick. We name all on our prayer list this day, and those who we name before you now. God, in your mercy, Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. We name the saints of our lives. God, in your mercy, Holy, holy, holy God, fill us with strength and courage, with discernment and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and love in this world, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us extend God's peace to one another this day. God's peace be with you.
traditional anthem on this special day. Let us now rise as we receive our gifts for this day. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. 
Spirit, your, you, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, our life, our mercy, our might, our table, our food, our server, our rainbow, our ark, our dove, our sovereign, our water, our wine, our life, our treasure, our tree, our way, our truth, our life. You, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, praise now, praise tomorrow, praise forever. Amen and amen. And let us now join our hearts and voices and pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins.
Congratulations again to Diana and Andrew uh, and for our guests who are worshiping with us today. It is indeed a, a good day to come and worship God. Uh, with confirmation now concluding, uh, pastor class has concluded, adult forum has concluded. Doug, it's summertime, uh, so we can kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Things just, there's not, 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 not a lot on the calendar, but there is a week from Wednesday, uh, the WAM Juneteenth service. And originally it was scheduled for Thursday, but St. James uh, uh, AME Church in Town was unable, they are the hosts and they were unable to do it Thursday, so we moved it ahead one day. So this will be uh, the 14th of June, a week from Wednesday. It is a great uh, experience to come together, an interfaith experience uh, with all of the churches from the uh, surrounding area to uh, recognize and to celebrate uh, this day of Juneteenth, which is really a, a celebration to the end of slavery in this country. So that's 7.30, uh, a week from Wednesday, not this Wednesday, but a week from Wednesday. Those are the announcements I have. Are there other announcements? Uh, Nancy, Race? Uh... Okay. Uh, Nancy, we've got a microphone here so our people at home can uh, hear. Sorry. There we go. Uh, first, I would like to thank all the people that came out yesterday. We had a wonderful presentation. And for those that missed it, this photo will be added to the Racial Justice Learning Library if you'd like to see heritage tour in Princeton or about the Princeton Cemetery. There's some handouts here that show them, of course. The other thing, uh, two more things. As you're saying there's not too many announcements, but Racial Justice Team has a lot going on. Good, so good. Next Sunday, anybody would like to go to the Manitoba and Lenape Powell in South Jersey, we will be leaving right at the end of the service, so let me know if so. And this Saturday after that is June 17th. Another Juneteenth celebration, and you can talk to Nancy Harrington, who's working with the volunteers at the Stoutsland Sauerland African American Museum. So please join one of those for both. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Other announcements? If not, let us rise for the benediction. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest sea. Bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.